watch out, pay attention. It was one way for Todd to convey to us that he wanted us to stay on our toes and not get complacent with our routes, procedures, or anything else that became quite commonplace for us to do up here at Snowbird. The very last thing Todd wanted was for someone to get hurt or killed on his watch. Todd cared about us all with his whole heart. He made you feel valued. Even when he got annoyed with people, he got over it quickly and settled down to the business of keeping the mountain a safe place. At the end of the day, he would sometimes join us with a beer and a shot and some stories of the day. Todd cared about everyone with all he had. So now we are left with this hole in our hearts, the sadness, this grief, agonizing the what ifs. A common thought for so many of us, how, we, how could we have missed this? I remember vividly the time I heard Shane Willett, Willett a former ski patroller, took his life. At the time, I remember being so angry with him because I really didn't understand how someone could do this to their loved ones. What I've learned since is how the person in the dark place thinks. In their mind, everyone around them would be better off without them. They view themselves as a burden. Despite how much they are loved and care about, in their minds, there's no way out. Depression is so deep, and in a depressed person's mind, they have no way seeing through it. They just don't know how they can get better. It's a spiraling dark black hole that has a seemingly endless point of no return. Being depressed is sort of like trial, like being stuck in a bad place in a very intense storm. In the midst of the storm, it's very dark, abrupt, tumultuous, and can be hopeless. And you don't feel like it will end or know what's going to happen. But eventually the storm will break. The sun will come out, the clouds clear, and there's clarity. We all wish that Todd could have seen the storm in his life break up. For those of us that have been in this black hole at that moment, it does seem incomprehensible of how to get out. But there is a way out, and you can make your way out of depression. Unfortunately, Todd just couldn't see it. In these times, there are important things for all of us to remember who are left to move forward. It's about connections. The first is the importance of connection to yourself, to evaluate how you are doing, be honest with yourself, and how you feel about your reality. If it's painful, painful, it may mean you need to reach out and get some help from an outside perspective. Chances are someone has had the same experience of the same holes you are experiencing. For those of you that have never been in a black hole, lucky you, you're in the minority. For all the rest of us, keep that connection real and be honest with yourself. The, section, the second connection is to others, family, friends, and strangers, and how you feel in this world. We as humans are not meant to navigate this crazy world alone. You can brighten someone's day with a smile, a kind word, and a caring attitude. This helps us realize the why and why we were here, and Todd would want that. The third connection is to God, or whomever, or however you find your spirituality. Wherever it is that takes you to that special connection unmet anywhere else, that is your special place. And for many of us, that is here. Are you able to go there? Or are there thoughts that are limiting this? Contemplate this perspective in your life. It's time to put our arms around each other and let each other know how important and valuable we are to each other. There isn't one person in this room that wouldn't beg to have the opportunity to tell Todd that he's loved and valued. Don't wait to tell this to someone that is next to you or close to you or not. Lean in, listen intently, care deeply. We all have it in us. Everyone brings their own strengths and peculiarities to Snowbird. It's what makes us all unique and special. Every one of us is here to feel God's love as we heal from Todd's passing. We are here to love one another, protect one another, and care about one another. Feel the strength and reach out to one another not only this time of need, but always. God bless you, Todd. Amen. The red jacket. Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name's Kevin. I worked at the West Desert District B 
BLM with Todd out at Vernon. And up here with me is uh, two of his dearest friends from the desert, Ryan Scrogan and Nick Hillman. So, um, Todd came to us in 2003, I think on the recommendation of a wise Patrick Kenny, somewhere out there in the crowd. And uh, when somebody leaves our organization, what we like to do is present them with a Pulaski um, as a sign of uh, appreciation for their service for all the years out there in the desert with us. So some people only have a couple years. Todd had 15 out there with us. So, um, you know, 2003 through 2019, and, you know, there's a lot that happened in those years out there in the desert and uh, probably not enough time here to explain them all. So um, when we heard that Todd had passed, uh, you know, everybody started talking about the Pulaski because it's been sitting in my office for two years, along with some notes from S260 that Todd wrote that everybody in the BLM has used to pass that class online now. <laughs> and his certificate of 10 years of service for the federal government that hung above our printer in the day room at Vernon. <laughs> that also has yogurt on it, which I'm not quite sure where that came from. But um, long story short with these is uh, these mean a lot to us, uh, and it means a lot to us to give them to the people that earned them. And when we heard that Todd had passed away, we couldn't think of anyone else that should have it besides Vanessa. Yeah. So, Vanessa, I only got the opportunity to meet you once. Thank you for picking us up from the bar. <laughs> And uh, like I said, these two up here are some pretty special people and uh, meant a lot to Todd. So I wanted to give them an opportunity to say something. Yeah, I, Ryan Scrogan and yeah, I've known Todd since you know 2003, and we we're basically next door neighbors at the old Vernon. Can you hold it? I mean, there's stories out there that you could talk about for hours and hours. Most of them probably not appropriate. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> you know, and he, he had he had three families. He had you know, he had the Snowbird family, he had the, the BLM family, and he had his family, you know, and there wasn't a day that he would not talk to Vanessa or talk about her and like he was always on the phone with her and it really impressed me like how busy we were like he always made time to talk to Vanessa yeah there, there are all kinds of stories about Todd and I don't think anyone should feel sad or bad or you know he someone said before like he would I'd be the last person to be here. <laughs> yeah, I just want to thank everyone. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name's uh, Nick. Uh, the Uncle Greeny called me Nigsy. <laughs> and uh, just want to, uh, you know, tell him that, you know, I love you. And, uh, you know, we rookied together at the BLM and we, were, we got our assistant jobs together at the BLM and we became captains uh, together at the BLM and uh, he was a brother, uh, he was a father and I, re I, I remember, you know, early on in my career, Vanessa, he was telling me that he was teaching you how to open the milk carton and that you were digging at it with your little finger and he was trying to teach you to bend the edges back and to pull on them to get that finger to open. And, and now here I am having that same conversation with my daughter 15 years later about how to open the milk carton. But he was a great friend, the funniest guy I know. Definitely hold you accountable. Make sure you towed the line. But we're going to miss you a lot, buddy. And I uh, love you, Ugby. 
and uh, take care. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity. Oh, yeah. And I got this tote, this coat from Todd as well. His grandma gave it to him when he uh, first moved out west. He said to start doing the ski stuff. And, and uh, yeah, buddy. Okay, we're going to open it up to anybody else who would like to say a few words about Todd. Let me to hold it. Hey, my name is Scott Berady. I'm with these, this crew up front. I'm not good at this. I can break down. Whoever said they broke down before, I'll break down double time. I've been crying my eyes out. And I hope that all these guys will come up and say something because we are the root of Todd right here. Seventh grade, we made the decisions that Todd made to get here. Do it. Nah, I don't think so. Well, yeah, go ahead, do it. And we did it, and Fred knows right here, we made bad decisions. Amen. <laughs> but we're here. We're celebrating. And I worked here in 2002. I wore a wig because I was a hippie fucking trying to find my way. Todd and Jeff Anwala right here were... They like, I'm going west. We were New Yorkers. I'm going west. I'm skiing. I'm, there's bigger, better things. We would get in our car. Spring break. Everybody load up. We got seven days. We're going to drive 22 hours. You, your turn, your turn, your turn, your turn. We're going to ski for five, as long as we can. And then we're going to get in the back car. And we're going to go back to New York. I moved out here after that. I was a hippie, I had long hair. I refused to cut my hair. And I moved to Salt Lake back in 2003. Mistake? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, you're not welcome here, dude. Till somebody said, hey, I know a good wig shop. I bought a $60 wig and I would drive up this canyon every day, 4.30 in the morning, I worked at the atrium, slinging omelets. But I would wake up at 3.30 to put my locks in a wig, and I got a job that day. I bought that wig, and I would drive up this, up and down this canyon every freaking day just to ski here. And it was the best time of my life. And he introduced me to ski bumming, and I'm a professional ski bum. <laughs> Deep down, I'm a professional, but I am a ski bum at heart because of Greeny, Todd Greenfield. We have this, he's Mago to me, and I was Mago to him. Hey, Mogs, how you doing? Hey, Mago, Mago. And it was, I'm really doing good here. But I was crying like a fucking baby over there. But you guys are all holding me up because Greeny is the most special. Everyone said it. He could make you laugh. I peed my pants a hundred times with that motherfucker. Over and over. That guy would make you piss yourself. Like, dude, come on. So I just want to thank all of you, all of us, all of us, because we should have been here before this. I haven't yeah. seen him in years, but it doesn't matter because we had a connection. I am, I saw him yesterday and I haven't seen him in, 15 years, but it didn't matter because we were brothers from the beginning. And these guys right here in the front row are the same. And I want to thank all of you because this is the most special shit I can only imagine. Greeny, Woo. Mago. For those, those, for those who don't know me, my name's Matai. I'm gonna try and do this. Uh, Todd meant a lot to me, <clears throat> especially these last couple years. Uh, I've had a couple bad 
back surgeries and wasn't able to do much. And no matter what, his days off, he came down, mow my lawn, do whatever, always willing to do whatever. Never asked for anything in return. Um, ah, I love the guy. Spent the last week with them last weekend. Uh, he'd been helping me redo my basement, painting, and did the floor. Um, it was pretty good. We we always laugh when we're doing something together. You know, you know, Todd. He's got to comment on anything and everything, and I do something, and he'd be like, oh, "You fucker! I'm the one that's supposed to be lifting that. What are you doing?" And like. You're standing there watching me. <laughs> but a yeah, good buddy, um, good memory. Uh, we were watching TV at my house one day, uh, watching, uh, I don't even remember, flipping. We had a few beers. Watching, uh, next thing you know, Spanish Channel comes on and it's the pet detective. And, those you know Todd, he knows every word to every movie out, you know, bad movie. <laughs> He's got it. Every time I have a surgery, he'd bring me four or five of them and let me know when you watched them all, bring you another set, yeah. you know. The, but the pet detective, we're watching it in Spanish and He's saying the same thing that he, that Carrie is through the whole movie. And we're just busting a gut. I mean, like crying. We had to like change the channel so we'd stop laughing. But then we kept going back. It's like we watched more than half the movie in Spanish. <laughs> I mean, we, I don't know how many times after that we commented it. Say, man, we have to go watch that Drew Carey show again. Or not Drew Carey, but you know what I mean. But anyway, <sighs> I just want to do a toast to Todd. Here's to a good friend. Shared a lot of beers, a lot of memories, good times, bad times, but always smiling through the bad. Thank you, brother. What a beautiful, beautiful tribute. Um, oh, Todd has uh, spent, uh, he holds a very close spot in our hearts. Yeah. You know, it was 1990 when I jumped in the car with my husband. And he's like, we're going to go west. And I said, OK. And we ended up here. Um, and. You might be responsible for Todd coming here, I think. I think so. <laughs> he showed Todd, up in our apartment. Todd showed up weeks later and stayed with us and lived in our closet. And, um, he didn't have to, but he oh, had We were a, the three musketeers. It was a nice closet. It was very spacious. <laughs> we, we worked at Snowbird um, for a number of years, and um, we did head back east. Todd stayed. However... We always made it a point to come out here and, and see him and be with him. And Martha and Vanessa and- He was Uncle Greeny to our Uncle kids. Greeny and they can't be here. And they wish they we could should, be. We should probably Anyways, give our condolences from all the for group back Back home. east um, and- So uh, many people love Todd and they can't, couldn't be here. Right. And very fortunate to come back every year, or at least twice a year. And this guy here always made it back. So. Much as possible. Much as possible. But we love Greeny, and we're going to miss him dearly. And um,
know I'm not very good at these things. But I was talking to my husband Keith today saying, I remember a rookie party where Todd and I were uh, maybe a little drunk, not quite sure. And we were scheduled on GAD2 the next day and we were like going on and on like, oh yeah, we're on GAD2. You know, and the, the hike to the ridge was open. It's like, yeah, this is going to be our day. We're going to be hiking and tanning and hiking and tanning. It's going to be nirvana. It's going to be great. <laughs> laughing. And then one of the gals who was like standing next to us said, you know, you guys just need to shut up. <laughs> the hiking and tanning is like, really? And we're like, F, F you, right? <laughs> and, you know, Todd was, I've worked with Todd for 26 years huge part of my life, taught me to be a better gunner, laughed my ass off with him, I don't know how many times, how many hours if I spent up here on this mountain in these facilities, hanging out with him, loving him, running routes with him. We're all gonna miss him. And all I can say is that, sorry, we need to love each other. What's up, 538? <laughs> 546. Greenbud and I were on the. He came up. We uh, we showed up. Well, he was a valet guy at the cliff or something back in 96, 95. 96, 97, we got on the trail crew together, which for you, the, those of you who don't know, is the ski patrol rookie year. We were thick as thieves, Todd and I. I think everybody knows that. We, uh, he immediately realized that I like to talk shit. <laughs> he liked to talk shit, so we spent a lot of time together. <laughs> We left the other guy in the dust. He was like, 538, 546, where you guys at? <laughs> no response. <laughs> we, uh, I heard there was an open mic and I was like, my brain was like, <sighs> a million stories. But I gotta just say, it was pretty funny. Um, I got married in 2004. Um, and uh, it was the first introduction of Todd to kind of like my, I grew up in Jackson Hole and it was the first introduction of Todd to like my family. I said, this guy Todd's in my line and my cousins and my best friends from school were like, who's this Todd guy? And I was like, well, he's, you're gonna find out. <laughs> and uh, he did not disappoint. He, uh, I won't take too much of your time. I really wish I had the video. But uh, Todd got up at our wedding, and my wife's family is pretty conservative LDS, and uh, we were well tuned. And he gave a hell of a speech. And uh, they found out who Todd was. He was never super impressed with me because I was like, you know, the golden child because my dad was I was a second generation ski patroller and he uh, had he had to get over that a little bit but <laughs> he let me know it all the time but uh I mean I can't believe we're here but you know we'll always remember Todd and let's just he would want me to keep it funny so let's just keep it funny <laughs> anyways we love you 38 and uh, you'll always be with us. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Good job. Tough act following the fresh. <laughs> Second generation snow routine patrol. Anyway, 
I just came up here to tell you, I, I, you know, I taught Todd everything he knew. <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, you must be I No. no. But anyway, uh, I, I was a line patrolman my whole life, and so I got to meet Todd when he came, and uh, and he was a great friend, and we did a lot of stuff together that we probably shouldn't have done, but we we survived, and we were glad about it, and we figured it was normal, but. Uh, a few years out, I guess quite a few years after I met Todd, um, my mom passed away, and I was really broken up about it. And I came up here, and Todd was the first guy I ever saw. And, and he just wrapped his arms around me, you know, like Todd could do. <laughs> and as you guys see, as you guys have seen, I mean, this family here is... This family's amazing. It's, we are so blessed to have this around us. And I hope we bless Todd's life with the time that we got to be with him. But I just, uh, I just want to echo what Rita said that, you know, we got to reach out to each other we got to de uh, destigmatize mental health issues. We got to get more counseling. We got to learn to talk. Tough guys need to be crying and telling it. You got a problem with your brother, your mother, your sister, your job. We love you, Todd. And the way we're going to honor you is we're going to promote mental health care. And I love you for what you, for the comfort you showed me, Todd. I'll never forget you. And, uh, and I just uh, hope this family here can all, you know, help each other deal with whatever issues they got. Because we all got issues. Let's face it. We all got them. So the, all we can do is share them. I love you, Todd. Hidden Beat Copy 513. Out and super sweet. Shut up. Hang on. Is this a line? Can I? Hi. My name is Jamie. I'm going to try and do this. I showed up out in the desert. The year after Todd and Nick and I thought everybody was so cool and so tough and I was so excited to be a firefighter and even though I was on a different engine than Todd I was fortunate enough to work with him all the time and we lived together out there and he taught me so much I learned that if I cook with vinegar in the kitchen, his bald head would sweat <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and he would go, wow, that smells really nice. Can you not do that again? <laughs> it's, just, it's just dripping. I learned how to clean that kitchen very, very well. Every day, whether it needed to be cleaned or not, we swept, we mopped and it was sparkling. And I knew how to clean an engine. I knew how to organize a lot of things because of Todd. There are also many, out, many adventures out there in the desert where I was maybe a little scared, a little nervous, and we were, all of us out at the burn, we were, we're all a team, we're a family and we brought each other home. And I knew whenever I was on Todd's engine and working with him, I would always come home. <gasps> Thank you, Todd. Oh, yeah. wow.
Does anyone else feel like they want to say something? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Hensel, a.k.a. Harry. Harry. Uh, Harry. <laughs> I'm one of the local folks that uh, grew up with Todd. Um, uh, you know, I first met Todd actually back, back uh, as Fred was saying, Todd was a great athlete, you know, playing Pop Warner football. And, uh, you know, we didn't really, we great friends back then because he's like a year or two older than I, and he actually should kick my ass all over that yeah. field because I was a little guy. <laughs> And he was a couple years older when you're that age, it makes a big difference. So he used to kick my ass all over that field. And so uh, um, he didn't really get to know him then, but then later on in life, it was uh, uh, junior high, high school. Um, you know, we entered into a, I would say a brotherhood. We became friends. Um, we had a brotherhood of uh, folks, uh, locals. Uh, we actually had a fraternity. We call ourselves the OML and in that group of folks. Some of them sitting right here. We we uh, lived, we learned, we grew, uh, we experimented a lot. Uh, we we learned what not to do and what maybe we should should do better. Um, and uh, you know, like I said before, a lot of that helped groom Todd to become what he was today. You know, I had the benefit of of uh, being pretty close to Todd in, in the early days. Um, you know, Todd and I actually roomated together in college, and I'll tell you, just something to have a roommate, have Greeny as your roommate, oh boy, <laughs> tell you about the stories, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of regret that, you know, as we grew older, um, I know nobody likes to talk about regrets, but as we grew older, we kind of grew apart. Um, you know, we ch talked every once in a while, we'd see each other every once in a while, but, you know, it's been... 15 years, I think, since I've seen Todd. <laughs> and it's just been so nice to come here and uh, see all you people and hear what a great man Todd has become. <laughs> I wish I could have been a little bit closer with him at the end in the last years, but that is what it is. I still love him. He's always going to be my brother. So here's the Todd. My name's Dave. I'm with Wasatch Adaptive Sports, so I'm representing Elizabeth and Eileen. Todd was always good to our program and always took care of us. Uh, I, so Todd and I were big Syracuse. We're upstate New York boys. So the Cuse is in the house. So Syracuse did well. We were always high-fiving and talking about it and having fun. I even got him to come to my Coney Fest. If you're from upstate New York, you know what a Coney is. It's the best freaking hot dog you've ever had. Quick little story about Todd about nine, ten years ago. We were doing evac training with the ski patrol, uh, and the ski patrol knows me as Shitnik, not Shenick, just to clarify. <laughs> and so, so I'm at, I'm sitting next to Fish, and we evac'd him, belayed him down safely on Gad Zoom. We go over to Mid Gad, and Todd goes, "Dave, I'll get in there." So he gets in the sit ski. We get the belay. We push him off the edge of the chair. He doesn't go anywhere because I had not taken the runner and the carabiner off the back of the chairlift. So shit, so he's trying to pull himself up. I'm trying to pull him up. I get enough slack, we get him down. But if you know the ski patrol, if you fuck up, you owe alcohol. So it's like, okay, uh, shit, Nick, you owe us a case of beer. PBR, nasty beer. <laughs> just saying, I'm just saying, I'm a beer snob. All right, whatever. So I said, Todd, what do you drink? He goes, I drink tequila. So I bought him a bottle of tequila because he's the one hanging there. I want to leave you with something. I know grief from a friend who took his own life and from my sister who died uh, 45 years ago, my drunk driver. But what we have once loved, we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us.
God bless you. like to uh oh, this thing has been turned off <laughs> i have a really loud voice i could probably talk without it i could probably figure it out quicker than this thing right here but okay here we go all right i figured this out i'll keep it away so i would like to thank everyone that came up and spoke this evening and i was particularly moved by a couple of my friends that came up here and spoke. Um, but uh, I think that uh, those tears and the time of crying is over for the moment. Who wants to blow something up? Yeah. So here on the Snowbird Ski Patrol, we like to uh, make a little bit of noise for the people we love. And um, so the plan is right now is uh, get a hold of my colleagues here on the radio and we'll start uh, a, a few minutes of silence for Todd and everybody will know when that moment is over. <laughs> and then uh, and after that, I'll say a couple more things and then we'll have another moment. moment. <laughs> All right, so stand by a second. Hey, JB, just let me know when you guys have started that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start a moment of silence up here. Which way should we point our direction? For right now. We're ready. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. All right, I would like to take the everybody for the next, well, we have a three-minute fuse, but we'll, we'll see how long it is. <laughs> but uh, why don't we just uh, take a moment on. for Todd. Turn the mic on. Turn the mic on. Let's take a moment for Todd! Yeah. Yeah. Love you, buddy.
impressed about that echo off of the yeah, twins yeah. there with Todd. Yeah. When we put the village gun in and turned it into a 105 howitzer, Woo! you yeah. and I right. gathered the data and um, we picked those targets and to hear that sound off those mountains is amazing. So we've taken some of Todd's ashes and we put them on some fireworks. Oh yeah. yeah. And um, I would like to, uh, if we could get these lights turned off or whatever, it doesn't really matter. This is all noise here, so. But um, we put some of my friends' ashes on some fireworks and we'd like to send Todd up with a bang right now. Yeah. So yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> 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 